right guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. The time has finally come to reveal my brand new 1875 Pro V from Lund. Now that we've got the aqua traction done, all the graphs rigged, everything is all rigged. Mid Kansas Marine did everything when I was on my honeymoon. And uh, I've already had the last couple weeks here to break the engine in and really put her through her motion. So uh, before we hop in the boat and uh, get on the water here, let's talk about the whole integrity of itself. So all Lund boats have their patented IPS hull system. The Pro Vs, however, and the upper echelon, like your uh, Impact 2025, are all gonna have the IPS 2 hull. So basically, uh, long story short, all that means for you is a much more stable and dry ride, but uh, IPS stands for Integrated Power Strake. So on these new Pro Vs, they have an additional strake down at the bottom um, to kind of shoot that water out and behind the boat. But like I said, more than that, super super sturdy boat so if you guys have been in like an impact before um, which impacts are great boats but anything below the 2075 or the 2025 model uh, is going to have the regular ips hull so it's going to feel a little bit more light and kind of tinny um, but in this lund in these new pro v's especially once you get up to the bigger ones it is like riding in an suv on the water so um, as far as the trailer goes though, I mean, I've got the upgraded trailer package. So the real nice wheels and the uh, stainless steel fenders there. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I was able to, if you guys want to come around on this side here, I was able to get my trailer steps from my old boat fitted on the Lund trailer here. And these actually are amazing. Uh, on this trailer. So uh, I run Easy Steps. I mean, there's a lot of different step companies out there, but like I said, these came off my old boat. So instead of getting brand new ones, we just fitted them to this trailer and it works out great. So that pretty much covers everything. So I'm gonna have my buddy Casey drop me in here and we'll talk about all the interior features of the boat on the water. Since we are currently being dumped in here, we're gonna use this opportunity to do what every Mercury Pro XS V8 owner should do. And that's just appreciate the startup. I'm not sure that the sound is going to pick it up, but we'll certainly try. Hopefully you guys heard that. So yeah, this boat is powered by a 200 horse uh, Pro XS V8 four stroke. 200 horses is the max horsepower on this particular boat. I just feel like it would be a little underpowered at 150. As far as speed is concerned, because I know that's everybody's favorite question to ask about somebody's boat is how fast does it go? I've seen almost 54 in this boat, so mid 50s, depending on your prop pitch, is about what you can expect. But as you guys can see, also have the 99 Mercury Pro Kicker right next to that for trolling purposes. I've had that running a few times. Uh, and that thing just purrs like a kitten. Super, super fun boat to drive. So let's uh, just get this thing up on pad and um, start talking about some of the interior features. Sweet. Yeah, that is one thing. This this boat jumps right up out of the hole. Even when I have four, I've had five people in this boat um, and this thing just jumps right up out of the hole. So I don't know, we'll run around for a little bit, kind of put her through her motions, but yeah, it is a super, super fun boat to drive. Okay, so we've already talked about the engines here, so we'll just kind of go from the back of the boat to the front. So uh, as far as the starboard side, we've got, like you guys saw in that first video that I did on this boat, the integrated step ladder to the back here. So we'll just flip this guy over, four step ladder that telescopes right up and then hides back away. So that's really nice to have. Um, also have a washdown system installed on this boat. So just flip a switch on the other side, start spraying water. That works really nice on the aqua traction here when we got something spilled, a little bit of blood or coffee or something like that. But other than that, on the back deck, we have the integrated jump seats as well. So on the old Pro V models, it was a whole back deck kind of flip down system, kind of confusing where you can only really do one at a time. Uh, Live well was down there too. So, but on this one, just like the impacts and the crossovers, we've got the built-in jump seats. So that 
allows me to not have to have a third seat back here unless we absolutely need it so that we can utilize all of the cockpit space back here. So then down here we've got tool holders, cup holders, and then right down here we've got the Lund Sport Top. So the difference between the Lund Sport Top and a Bimini Top is that the Bimini Top does not attach to the forward windshield here. Um, the Sport Top, like you guys can see, has buttons all across the top of the windshield. That's where the top of the Sport Top goes to. And then the in the Lund track system, these are where that Sport Top attaches to. So uh, it's always nice to have, but yeah, you've got this hideaway deal right here to kind of hide that so nobody's really tripping over it. So you can always keep it in the boat. I hardly ever realize it's there, so we keep the Bimini at home and leave the Sport Top in the boat. Then as far as the live well goes, uh, tournament size live well here. This is a 21 or 22 gallon live well, 44 inches long. And in the Pro Vs, like I said, this is a tournament boat. So we've got the Pro Long Plus live well system. So on the far left side here, this is your nozzle for your high speed pickup, which allows me to run on full plane. And this thing will just fill up without the aerator even being on. And then speaking of aerator, second from the left here, that's your aerator uh, to pump water in. And then the red nozzle, this when it's pushed in is your recirculation in the live well. But when you pull that out, that allows you to pump water out the transom of the boat as the uh, pump down system without actually having to get down there and pull the plug. So really super nice live well system. I'm really excited. I'm probably not gonna be using this much cause I'm not a big live bait guy, but it sure does look cool. So then moving forward just a little bit here, you guys can see I have all my rod holders on the Lund Sport Track system. So the Lund Sport Track works really nice, especially these new ones that they design. You just flip this lever up right here and you guys can just see that little T-handle just glides right into the track. Then you pop that lever back down and then you're good to go. So when you buy these tracks, you can pretty much put whatever you want on them. You just drill right through and put some one inch carriage bolts through there and you're good to go. So that makes it really nice to move these or any other accessories uh, up and down the boat, not a single hole drilled in the boat. So then below the track here, we've just got a little flip out storage compartment. I just keep some microfibers in there for wiping the boat down three or four 3700s. And then for my rear live scope, since I run two, uh, when I'm not using it, I can just store it right in there. And then when I want to pop it in, we've got the sea light base on the track mount here. And again, that just pops right in there. So it makes it really easy to just kind of switch back and forth if we don't want that in the way. So on same thing on the port side here, we've got more flip out storage. This one actually has four sections in the rod box for I think up to 10 foot rods. Uh, normally I would put my trolling rods in there, but we're doing a lot of trolling this time of year. So my general rule of thumb in the boat when as it pertains to rods, if it's out, I'm probably using it, but when it's put away, I'm not using it. So right now I've just got my stern light stored in one of those rod holders, a bunch of planer boards and a bump board right here. But I just have a feeling that one's gonna be used for more of a kind of catch all box versus uh, my long trolling rods. So then moving forward, kind of back to the starboard side here. Um, we've just got a little catch-all compartment right here. Also really nice stainless steel um, touch on the cup holders, another tool holder. This right here um, is just for just hanging extra hooks or jigs kind of at the end of the day or just your on the go deal. But for me, Mid-Kansas Marine was able to rig this up for my rear live scope really slick. My transducer cable comes out of here and then runs back to my second black box in the stern. Um, and that way I can just leave my sea light pole laying down right there. No cables or cords or anything really in the way. So that turned out really nice. I was really excited about that. Kind of moving forward here again to the cockpit, we've got the standard air ride Lund seats. So while they're not, you know, smooth moves or anything like that, they still do have a bit of suspension. So that's gonna help my lumbar immensely uh, considering I have terrible lower back problems in the winter time, but super, super nice dashboard here. So you guys can see on these new Pro V's, what they've done is redesign the console, the dash, so that it's all one piece. It's all just flat. So that allowed me to mount my two 12 inch Garmin's direct to the dash. No more Ram mount or any other accessories to bring that graph up. These are mounted direct with four bolts to the dash and they just will not move. So I actually traded out one of my 10 inch graphs uh, for a second 12 and having two 12s on this dash here looks really, really slick. So other than that, just standard, standard gauges. Uh, I have Mercury Vessel View on my cell phone so I can monitor my hours or any uh, codes that the engine might throw. So I don't need the smart craft gauges on there. 
We've got standard Rockford Fosgate stereo, two six inch kickers down here, and then two four inchers up there. We've had this thing rocking, so it's nice to have a good speaker system. But then on the dashboard itself here, um, got kind of just like a little, another catch-all place for your phone. We've got a USB and USB-C outlet right there, which will be nice for charging people's phones. And my own little personal glove box right there. I just got a couple extra pair of shades in there. Wireless phone charger too. I'll just pull mine out real quick so you guys can see. I mean, it's just like any other kind of clamp mount. But as soon as we get that plugged in, it starts charging. So again, that's just an option that you can have added. You can even have, have them added to the uh, passenger side, which I did not opt for, but doesn't really matter. And then down here, I know it's gonna be kind of awkward to see with my legs here, but uh, LED backlit gauges. So we've got all your standard stuff. So I will insert a clip right here to uh, show you guys what the interior LED lights look like. Uh, they came standard on these new Pro Vs and they just look absolutely amazing. They've even got a dimmer switch on the uh, dash panel there too, because they are super bright and you definitely need that, uh, that dimmer switch. But other than that, on this side, I mean, we've got recessed controls. So you can see like in my captain's chair here, I can spin all the way around and my knee is not gonna hit the throttle or trim my kicker up and down because that was an issue that I always had, um, was just trying to spin around and hitting one of those. So it's nice having the recessed controls on the driver's side here. And then passenger side in the console, we've got a massive, massive, massive glove compartment, which I told myself I was gonna keep a little bit cleaner, but as you can tell, I've already thrown everything in there that I could possibly want to lose. But I mean, it's big enough to where this is actually where I keep my fire extinguisher as well. There's a whole nother dry box back there with tools, licenses, registration, all that stuff, extra pair of shades, batteries. Again, everything I could possibly lose or uh, want to get rid of is definitely in the glove box. So down below the console here, you can see on the port side, you've got two on the go rod storage deals. So you can just shove a rod right up there for you running from spot to spot and then got the Velcro over here on this side. But then I think my favorite part of the whole console, except for the dash is probably the huge pull out drawers up underneath the dash here. So in these, I'm pretty sure you can fit nine, 10 or 11 Plano 3700 boxes in here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's definitely room for another one. I think I moved one of them over here to this side. Um, but on this side, what I kind of tend to do is just keep a lot of my bass tackle, bass crankbaits, frogs, top water, big, deep, giant cranks on one side. And then on my side, on the driver's side, that's where I keep a lot of my walleye stuff. So I've got a giant box of swim baits here. We got hair jigs, we got jigs, we got swim baits, we got spoons. Everything is right at my fingertip here. So I really like having those pull out drawers and the fact that you can fit so many 3700s because we are fishermen, we have lots of 3700s. So now we'll walk up through the walkthrough windshield here up onto the casting deck. Really nice big casting deck. You guys can see how good that aqua traction worked. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I guess before I get too far ahead of myself, we will speak on the 15 rod rod locker here. Pretty sure these fit up to eight foot rods. And then, like I said, if you need longer storage, you go on the port side in the gunnel. But all my Fox River slide in here super nice. I've got my four bank onboard charger down below uh, with my two lithium batteries for the trolling motor. And then in this compartment in the floor is my house battery that powers all four of my graphs and two of my black boxes for live scope. So everything is right at my fingertips. I have access to the deep cycle lithiums, the house battery, and then obviously my uh, starting battery is under the jump seats, which while we're back here, we do have storage up underneath the jump seats as well. So we've got a big toolbox, some cleaning supplies in there that butts right up against the live well. And then if we bounce back here, this one, this is actually where you're gonna find the cranking battery. I have an additional 45 amp hour um, lithium battery back there to power this black box. There's a battery cutoff switch in there. So again, everything is at your fingertips. You're not having to dig, dig around in compartments or uncomfortable places to access your power stuff. Okay, now we can move up to the dance floor and go over that stuff.
So again, nice big casting deck. Obviously, once you get up there in models after the 1975 Pro-V, you get an extra foot of uh, cockpit space and an extra foot in the bow. But I've been up here fishing with three people and it's just as comfortable as my other boats were. We'll kind of start from the back of the front deck here, if you will. We'll go over on the port side. We've got our onboard cooler, which it holds ice pretty decent, but it is nice to not have to have an additional cooler in the boat. So that's where we'll keep our drinks and snacks for the day. And then on the starboard side here, this is your second live well in the boat, but I don't really use the second live well. I plug that up and I use that for my plastics storage. So you guys can see, I just got all my various bags of plastics that I think I'll need for any given trip. There's a lot more room in there for more and that's probably what's gonna happen. I'm still kinda always adding stuff to the boat here. And then moving forward uh, up in these compartments here, just general storage, nice big compartments. So I've got life jackets, uh, fender in there, throwable, ropes. Again, just kind of can be tackle storage or just catch all storage. But the one thing I do really wanna talk about as it pertains to the compartments as well, is the waterproof boxes. So Lund has redesigned all these compartments to have this two or three inch channel running around all these with the insert sticking up so that you know when water enters this, all that water is gonna drain straight down into the bilge. You're not gonna get any water in your compartments whatsoever. And that for me is huge because we do, as much as I fish and guide, get stuck in the rain quite a bit. And in my old boat, I was constantly having to pull everything out of the compartments and then get two or three fans in here to dry everything out before it got moldy. So that became quite a chore. So when Lund redesigned their compartment lids with this waterproofing system, I was super jacked. Moving on from there, we've got the standard bow cargo nets. I've had those in my last four boats, I think. I could not live without them just to throw a fender, a couple rod holders, rags, baits, ropes, what have you. And then up here in front of the console, this is where you're gonna access all of your um, switcher, I'm sorry, not your switches, but your breakers. Um, there's an additional kind of bus bar up here. This is where all the power runs for my graphs, but with my graphs, I have everything direct wired. So we have nothing actually attached to the bus bar. So again, it is nice, especially when it pertains to having to fix something on the fly, just something you can access right away. Unlike my other boats where I had to get up underneath the console and it was not super comfortable. Moving over here, we've got your plug-in uh, for the onboard charger. And then we've got three on the go rod storage deals right there. I know it's tough to see cause I got my sea light, but that's where you can just shove three rods up in there um, when you're running from spot to spot. All right, so you guys can see I've got my second sea light mount up here for live scope. And unfortunately the way that this bow is laid out, I'm not able to kind of run it up across my gunnel like I was on my old boat, just because my stowaway mount when it's folded down kind of gets in the way. So I just leave it on the floor when we're going from spot to spot. And then obviously with how slick the sea light system is, you just flip this back out, tighten it down, throw the pole right in there, and then you're fishing. So make it super, super easy. And uh, just like their quick detach plate situation, you can just pop it on and off as you want to. So when I'm not using it though, I just leave it down just to ensure that uh, it's not gonna bounce off or anything. And then these two pretty ladies up here. So we've got the GPS map 8616 as my dedicated live scope unit on the top. And then I've got an Ultra 106 on the bottom. That Ultra is talking to my two graphs at the helm so I can see everything what's going on, transfer waypoints from one to the other. And again, they're on the double stack stowaway mount. So obviously with the kickstand feature, this is very, very key to lay this down. There is a lot of weight on that, but it locks right in and then is supported by the kickstand up underneath. So when you're running across the lake on a rough day, and especially when you're trailering the boat, you leave it down. When you're fishing, you just flip it right up and then you're good to go. But then right here, this long harpoon looking deal on the front, I went with a 72 inch Minn Kota Tarova. I've always been a huge Tarova fan. Bulletproof, never let me down. And on this boat with how bigger, how much bigger and deeper it was on the days that I fish in, on some of those really rough days, especially when I go up to Green Bay, I wanted the longest shaft that I could get on this boat. So we've got the 72, we've got it supported on a track, the Lund Sport Track system here with the ram mount, uh, just while we're trailering. 
or running across the lake to keep that head from bouncing around. Other than that, a couple more, we've got a cup holder up here, more tool storage, but I'm absolutely loving this boat so far. It rides like a dream. It's got all the storage that I could want. Uh, the windshield is a huge plus. I always said, just like I said in my last video about this boat, I would never have a full windshield boat. But then I got older and realized that, especially for my clients and a wife and three kids, it's just gonna be a little bit more comfortable uh, with everybody behind a windshield, especially on those cruddy days. But other than that, a couple uh, super new features um, in the newer Lunds. So there is not any marine grade plywood in this boat, especially in the transom. They've been uh, composite transom since 2017 or 2018. So you never have to worry about wood rot or anything gnarly like that. I had this boat done with full vinyl floors so that when Mid Kansas Marine did my aqua traction, they could just affix it right to the vinyl and everything has turned out amazing. You guys can see, you'll see in the drone shots how sick that aqua traction looks, especially on the gunnels there uh, with the topography pattern on the floor and the gunnels. I mean, it just looks amazing so i could not be happier with that as well but other than that guys i mean that's pretty much it um i really just kind of wanted to showcase how you can mount two giant graphs on your dash side by side now without any additional mounts or having to jerry rig it like on your track system which might be convenient for some guys but i like to have everything right in front of my face and obviously i can see over those graphs just fine i think there's a lot of people that think like you're not going to be able to see over those we have pedestals, adjustable pedestals on the seat. So if you're short and need a phone book, you can at least raise that seat up. But then I also wanted to showcase kind of how the stowaway mount worked on a boat like this. I mean, my other boats have been similar that I had the stowaway mount on, but I knew this one in the front was gonna be a little bit bigger and deeper, and then show you guys how my two sea light poles work on the sport track system because the sport track system is easily the best upgrade that i've had my last boat was just like a year before they started doing it so i've never had a track system and just been used to drilling into gunnels and now we didn't have to drill a single hole in this boat except for rigging the graphs the gimbal mount direct to the dash but like i said guys i am really looking forward to so much more content in this boat um i I was gonna try and get this video done first before I did any fishing in it, but I had to get out. You guys saw that in the last video. But we've got a big Green Bay trip with my dad coming up here in a couple weeks in August to go up and catch some big walleyes. And then obviously as my guide schedule is gonna be crazy in the next over the next six months, any days off that I get, we're gonna be doing a lot more content in this boat. So hope you guys enjoy this rig as much as I do. It sure is obviously a looker, um, but performance wise, you just cannot beat a Pro V if you're gonna go aluminum. So a couple big shout outs, big shout out to Mid Kansas Marine, Garrett, Casey and Kayla over there. Uh, I would not be in this boat if it wasn't for Garrett and getting me hooked up with Lund. Uh, definitely something that I feel so privileged for. Kayla for scanning and installing the aqua traction and Casey just for just for being Casey. We love Casey. And obviously big shout out as well to Sea Light and Stowaway Mount for getting me hooked up with all brand new stuff for this boat uh, so that everything is brand new and super cherry. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. I know walkthroughs can be kind of boring, but you knew it was coming. So again, thank you guys for sticking around through this walkthrough and we'll see you on the next video.